Focus 5 depends upon, is, is, is a study of the obvious next step after pure substances, which is simple mixtures. So how do you import uh, thermodynamics into the description where there is more than one component present in the system? And the key to that is the chemical potential because you can generalize the significance of the chemical potential from being simply the molar Gibbs energy of a substance and define it in a more general way as the partial molar Gibbs energy of the substance. That is, it is the contribution to the total Gibbs energy of the system that one component gives. So the total Gibbs energy of the system is the sum of the chemical potentials of all its components, weighted by the amount of substance that you've got present. Uh, whatever the mixture. And that means that um, because the total Gibbs energy of the mixture changes as the composition changes, so also the chemical potentials change. So the chemical potential depends upon the concentration, depends upon the composition of the mixture. It's no longer the, simply the molar Gibbs energy. It's the contribution that it makes at that particular contribution. A bit like the partial molar volume. And the total volume of a mixture is the sum of the partial molar volumes of the two components, weighted by the amounts of stuff that are present. And these partial molar volumes vary with the composition of the mixture because the molecules can pack round each other in different ways, depending upon whether it's mostly water or mostly ethanol or, or whatever. So um, here you need to understand the dependence of composition, of, of chemical potential on composition. And once you've done that, you can apply the concept of chemical potential to almost any equilibrium problem that you are likely to encounter. And it's extraordinarily, extraordinarily powerful. Equilibrium, once again, arises when the chemical potentials of a particular component are the same in the various phases that might exist, even in a, in, a, in a mixture. So you can simply carry across the idea of this pushing power, the pulling power of the chemical potential, and realize that all thermodyn equilibrium thermodynamics is about looking for the conditions and under which these chemical potentials are the same. The, um, the, the, the first thing to do that is, is first of all to see what's going on in um, a particular system and to record it. And the, the first three or four topics, which I won't go through in any detail, uh, are simply extensions of the concept of a phase diagram to a binary two component system. And each just as in um, the single substance phase diagrams, each region of the phase diagram represents the conditions under which that particular phase has the, um, uh, has the lowest Gibbs energy, as determined by the various chemical potentials prevailing at the concentration that you're talking about. And through this way, and once again, I won't talk through it in, in detail, you can begin to see how that you can discuss the, um, the distillation of liquids, the, the cooling of liquids, and the separation of, into solid components and so on. So you can discuss each type of binary system in a simple, straightforward way. In, in the course of that, you encounter a lot of sort of details about the existence of systems that freeze without changing 
so-called sort of eutectic mixtures. You also encounter, encounter the analog the, for vaporization, the azeotropic systems and so on, all of which have great um, um, uh, practical applications in, in, in material science and in, um, in the chemical industry. But I won't focus on those because really t to talk about them involves um, uh, discussing diagrams and I not, don't have that facility. What I do, the, the unifying idea though, apart from the idea about chemical potentials pushing and shoving each other, is um, the phase rule of Gibbs, which relates the number of phases in equilibrium when you specify the number of components and you know how many degrees of freedom that you have available to you. It is the most sophisticated result of all thermodynamics and probably the least used because of that. I mean, very few people use the phase rule, but it is something which ought to be carved, just as Boltzmann has his formula paved, paved, uh, carved on his tombstone. I think Gibbs ought to have the phase rule carved on his um, tombstone, wherever that is, probably Connecticut somewhere. Anyway, um, mixtures need to be discussed thermodynamically. And one of the ways of dealing with that um, is to introduce relations between gas properties and the composition of the mixture that you're talking about. And chemical potentials and the concentration, composition dependence of chemical potentials are related to the vapour pressure of the overlying vapour through laws like Henry's law and Routt's law. So even they're very old-fashioned laws. You can pity Routt and Henry for spending their lives measuring vapour pressures day after day. Um, uh, they are still crucial to making the transition to um, being able to express the value of a chemical potential in terms of the composition of the solution, provided the solution behaves in a simple way, provided it is essentially an ideal solution. But in the final topic of this particular group, um, of course, you want to go through this simple approach of perfect ideal behaviour and arrive at systems where interactions between the components cannot be ignored. But then you also come, you want to formulate thermodynamics so that you can um, use the equations that you've developed for perfect systems in the same equations that you've struggled hard to derive or remember. And so what the thermodynamicists have done is to replace the composition, the concentration, like the molality or the mole fraction, by an effective molality or effective mole fraction, which is called the activity. And what the activity does is simply enable you to use your old equations in new applications. Of course, at the end of the calculation, you have to be able to relate the activity to the actual concentration that you're interested in. But um, you can do all the thermodynamics that you did for perfect sol ideal solutions using activities instead of more fractions and end up with formulas in terms of the activities. And then your problem is simply to relate those to the real world of um, so on. And there are ways of doing that. Um, for example, the most famous way of doing that is through um, the de Baer-Hückel theory, which enables you to express the activity of ions in solution in terms of their concentrations. And the de Baer-Hückel theory is simply a way of saying, well, let's 
build a model. You see, we're coming back to models again, where we have ions surrounded by their counter ions, but in a constant case of turmoil. And the I, and um, what the Dwight Huckle theory does is to see what the energy is of that ion in the midst of this ionic atmosphere, this transient wisp of countercharge, and say, well, that changes its Gibbs energy, that changes its chemical potential. And so um, by, the Dwight Huckle theory simply says, I can now calculate the um, the change in chemical potential between having no charge and now everything charged and relate that to the actual concentration of the medium. So that's the, the role of the dwyer huckel theory in establishing um, what you really mean by activities. And it's a wonderful example of model building. So in this particular group of topics, what, it, what, it, what the focus has taken you from is a realization that you've got to be able to talk about mixtures, that you can use phase rule, the phase, you can use phase diagrams to portray the stabilities of mixtures, and then um, to um, uh, uh, understand through thermodynamics um, the thermodynamic behavior of these different phases, and finally to make the transition into the real world of real solutions by replacing concentrations by activities.